And here they come, the first of our best of breed winners, the Afghan Hound. The Basenji. And the Basenji. The Basset Fauve de Britannia. Gorgeous coat colour of one of the French hounds, the, the Basset Fauve de Bretagne. And Jessica's breed, the Basset Griffin Vendéon. This the is the Piggy Grand, and followed by the Petit Basset Griffon Vendian. The Basset Hounds. And the old original Basset Hound. The Beagle. Second largest entry in the Hound group for this year, the Beagle. The Bloodhound. And the very distinctive Bloodhound. The Borzoi. The Russian Wolfhound, the Borzoi. The Cineco Deletna. And from Sicily, the Cineco Deletna. Now we see the first of the six Daxon varieties, starting with the long hair Daxon. Beautiful coat of the long hair. Breed. And the mini long hair Daxon. The smooth hair Daxon. The miniature smooth, followed by the miniature wire dachshunds. Little mini wire there. Look at those the legs going. Yes, the dachshunds coming out of order a little bit here. The wire dachshunds. The wire dachshund coming in there. The deer hound. Now we have the deer hound. The Finnish Spitz. Crisp red coat, noisy little person this is, the Finnish Spitz. The Foxhound. And the Foxhound, very small entry here today. The Greyhound. Big round of applause for the Greyhound. The Hamilton Stavari. And the Hamilton Stavari, the Swedish Foxhound. The Abethan Hound. And from Ibiza, the Ibethan Hound. The Irish Wolfhound. <laughs> Ibethan Hound's dancing its way across <laughs> the ring. The Norwegian <laughs> Elk Hound. And the Norwegian Elk Hound. The Otter Hound. Very vulnerable breed, the Otter the Hound. Hound. Always quality, the Faro the Hound. Portuguese the Warren Hound from Portugal, the Portuguese Podengo. The Rhodesian Ridgeback. Characterised by that ridge of hair along the, the back, Saluki. you can see really clearly there. And the gorgeous Saluki, so elegant on the move. The Slugi. Racing lines of the Slugi. The Whippets. Winning breed last year, the Whippet. And finally, coming from the Any Variety in Bordeaux. And sensational for the breed, the because this is the first Coonhound. time they've been able to appear at Crufts. This is the Black and Tan Coonhound. Over to Jonathan Daltrey and Graham Hill. Thank you, Marina. So, ladies so there we are. A lovely collection of dogs and Frank is going to have to pick the best one out of those. I did say as they came in, I thought the Daxons were out of order. Normally you get the standard followed by its miniature variety because there are six varieties of Daxon. As I believe you will already know, having seen the earlier part of the television programme tonight when it goes out. 32 hound breeds and best of breeds before going to examine each of them individually. It's a really good chance to tell you a little bit about the sporting group of hounds. Top quality hounds here in the hound group. Frank taking a look at their uh, outlines. Different types of hounds have evolved. There's our six varieties of Dachshund. The group is made up of some of the oldest dog breeds. We have the sight hounds, dogs that hunt by sight, identifying their quarry from great distances with their keen eyesight. Then racing off to run down the target through speed, endurance, and persistence. 
And we have Centaur. These are goggles. Coming down towards the end of the line. The Ridgeback and the Whippet that, of course, Frank has already seen because uh, he had to referee the decision. There were so many Whippets entered that uh, the dog judge and the bitch judge couldn't agree on who should be best to breed, and Frank was called to go and adjudicate. He chose the bitch. And larger muscles and nostrils to allow for a bigger intake of breath to identify the following set as a quarry. So here we have the very distinctive, instantly recognizable Afghan hound. Six year old dog called Adamo, and their first win today. Frank feeling for the form and the confirmation underneath that glorious coat. Swift and powerful breed, that dignified head. A sight hound, of course, originating from Afghanistan's rugged mountains and plains where they hunted deer, gazelle, hare and even fox. They have a great impression of strength and dignity, don't they? Combined speed and power, very dignified, very aloof, and that coat which flows so magnificently on the move. The ring in the tail, very characteristic of this breed too. This one's come from Sweden to compete. Against 205 others and was judged the best. Free striding, plenty of reach in front there. Those big feet designed to run on sand and rubble. The Basenji, medium-sized hound who hunts by both sight, scent and sound with those prick ears. Hails from the African Congo, neat, high on the leg, almost cat-like in his cleanliness. They hunted game. In the more recent times, it's been used as a pack dog. They drive the game. And of course, the of course, the Benji, Basenji doesn't um, bark, he yodels, not because there's anything wrong with him, it's just a natural breed characteristic. And if you hear a pack of them together, my goodness me, the noise can be deafening. You'll see on the move here what a lovely quizzical expression he has, little wrinkles on his head. Curious, self-confident, friendly. They become very attached to their human family. They can be a bit aloof with strangers, though. That lovely tight tail. One, two, one, and a beautiful yeah. swinging stride. This one's called Whiskey, five-year-old dog. Now we look to the table where we see the first of the French hands, which have become established here in the United Kingdom. The Basset Fauve de Bretagne. This is the Basset Fauve de Bretagne. And shows this male number one, two, one, two, seven cc's, seven best of breeds, and group four, a placing at a hound show. So win a little bit. A neat little hound comes, as its name implies, from Brittany and France. This is a really courageous and hardy little russet coloured, rough coated scent hound. Prized as a real all-rounder, they're capable of hunting anything from rabbits to wild boar, either in couples, just two of them, or in small packs. Yes, also used because it could track predators, molesting flocks of French sheep. And that coat's harsh, dense and quite flat, either fawn gold or red wheat, and this one quite dark, it's lovely. Very nimble little dog as well. Legs are slightly shorter than the length of his back, but he's not as low to the ground as the countryman, the Basset, itself is. Tallest of the French Basset breeds, this is the Grand Basset Griffon Vendien. Medium size, should be rough coated, a scent hound of great balance and a noble bearing, originating, of course, in the Vendée region of France. And this one's come from the Netherlands too today. It's a seven year old dog. I think called Frosky, but I'm not sure. It might be Frosty. It might be. It is. It's Frosty. Frosby. <laughs> you can read better than I can. I guess. 
World Dog Show, best in show, so that's not a bad thing, is it? Hound Group finish Crofts in, uh, it was here 2017, first in the group last year. And the Grand Massé's got longer lines than his cousin, longer in the legs, you can see a longer body, slightly longer than he is tall, and that head, the noble bearing comes from the length in the head with that dome skull. Like most towns, he has a tendency to be hard of hearing when it suits them, because selectively deaf. A real canine escapologist, mind you, I find lots of the shorter-legged hounds are. That's exactly what they do. I think it's their job. Well, this is the smaller version. This is the pretty bus at Griffin Von Dion. This one has come here today. Oh, it's owned by Sarah Robertson. And it's called Mike, three-year-old dog. Smaller and lighter, the Petit Basset Griffon Vendian, less extreme proportions than his grand cousin. Second of the four Griffon Vendian hounds. There are actually two more taller, the Briquet and the Grand Griffon Vendian, but uh, those are not shown here in the UK. They describe this dog as having a real cartoon character. Loves giving kisses and adores our children. There you go, that's nice. And of course, Magic Mike was top dog all breeds last year. Lively, energetic little scent hound. This should be compact, rough coated, and the standard actually describes it as a good voice, freely used when on scent, but not necessarily just when on scent. <laughs> this colour is spot on, white with that combination sort of lemon and orange grizzle markings. Free striding, should have good reach in front. Plenty of drive from behind. A real working dog. And here we have the Basset Hound. This is another of the French scent hounds, although we often, of course, claim the Basset for our own. Hunted in packs for centuries, bred to be short-legged so they could be followed and fought on foot, not necess necessitating horses. Quite a big entry of them, so they're 121. It's a dog which is uh, reputedly bred by monks in France in the Middle Ages to hunt in heavy cover. And they're able to hold, also able to hold its nose close to the ground. Closely related to the whole family of French bassets. The breed is, well, we'll, we'll boast and say it was bred to perfection in this country. It's a bit cheeky though, that isn't it? <laughs> this Shorter is, on the leg, but of course should still be able to cross a ploughed field and hunt he's a five-year-old dog actually this one called danny and that saber tail's called a stern should be held aloft just like that white tip so that they were easier to see and those fantastic leathers that lovely long head and just look at the size of that nose a true scent hound Oh, the small dog here on the table, of course. This is the beagle. This is a three and a half year old bitch called Nikki. Top beagle in 2017. Beagle of the year. 10 cc's for best of breed. So, a good winning dog, this one. Sturdy and compact, the whippet. They're active little dogs, bold, determined and of the kind of character to make him really popular at home as well as working. Very much the hunter though. And they often say the man in the park with a lead and no dog owns a beagle. <laughs> That's true probably. Well, the breed was bred to hunt with men on foot, preferably after a hare. Still used in packs, very often organized by institutions including colleges and schools, but actually they're a first class family pet really makes his mark there. Bustling, eager little dog. And apparently Nicky is a typical beagle, full of mischief and an absolute dream of a show dog. The Bloodhound. Native of Belgium, the Bloodhound was originally used to track deer and boar and of course is instantly recognisable for that magnificent head and face. 
dog of great size and imposing dignity, recognized by even the least doggy people. I think most people would know straight away. They have an amazing ability to follow a human scent over, over all types of terrain. After many hours, that's uh, quite remarkable, really, given them quite a reputation. I can remember being tracked by one on purpose, I mean, set up for a film many years ago in the snow, and it found me. Powerfully built hound, the bloodhound, noble, solemn and dignified, being beautifully shown by this particular dog. He's Characterised by that loose skin, but it mustn't ever be over-exaggerated. Five-year-old dog called Yank. Pendulous lips, just look at those swing, long ears. Today, Jenny Dillon was in charge of this most graceful and spectacular breed. True aristocratic this, of course, is the Borzoi. I think they're absolutely magnificent. And this one has come from Japan. First big win today. FCI Japan International Show has done that. Best in show on the, on, in March 2018. But here is the biggest win. Fabulous for them to come all the way from Japan for this. Borzoi means swift, and this elegant, long-limbed Russian wolfhound used his speed to chase down his quarry, usually working in pairs, and his courage to hold the wolf at bay until the hunters arrived was prodigious and highly valued. Almost curvaceous in outline they are, long-necked, lean-headed. You can see how lean -head that head is. Aristocratic. I suppose really these arenas where we show them, they're not really big enough to see the dog at its most magnificent when it's on its fast movement. Absolutely tremendous. Long silky coat, the slight wave. It comes in a host of different colours and requires dedicated attention from a groomer to prevent it deteriorating into tangles. But this dog is presented beautifully. The Cherneco del Etna. It's a swift little rabbit hunter from Sicily who uses his nose and his acute sense of hearing to pinpoint his quarry in scrubby undergrowth. Just look at those ears moving all the time as he listens. Not a lot of uh, volcanic activity, though, in uh, Exmouth in Devon, where this one's from. It's a two-year-old bitch called Wagadu. Happy, loving but reserved. And you'd be forgiven for thinking that this looks a little like a pharaoh hound shrunk in the hot wash, but the two <laughs> breeds likely do have very similar ancestry, and uh, we see similar quality in these lovely Chenacos. It's a very elegant square outline, isn't it, overall? Uh, sculpted head, erect, rigid ears, very distinctive silhouette. And that lovely springy trot. It looks like it could go all day. It's primarily a scent hound, although he can also hunt by sight and hearing. The Cherneco del Etna. Just 28 of them here today. Now we have the long-haired Dachshund. Two-and-a-half-year-old dog called Tsar. Coming from Sweden to take part today, as we said, six varieties of Dachshund. This is the standard long-haired version. And the long, low shape of the Dachshund is superbly designed for going to ground, which means down a hole after quarry. Well, in Germany, they're known as Teckels, and Teckel means badger dog. That's what they were bred to do. And although this is a long-backed dog, we're, we're, we're looking for a lack of exaggeration. The dog still needs to be sound. The length in the ribs, nice level back. I always feel perhaps that the shorter coupled they can be, the better, because the long body and those short legs can give them little problems. But well, that's a beautiful long hair. Very cheerful disposition in all the Dachshunds. I said there are six varieties, three standards, standard sizes, and three miniatures. So each of the standards has a comparative miniature. And so we're now looking at the miniature. We're now looking at the miniature wire-haired Dachshund. Uh, Long-haired Dachshund. Oh, dear. 
losing my brain. I'll start again. <laughs> this is the miniature long-haired Dachshund. And this one is 17 and a half months old. He's called Arthur. Second CC today. And although a diminutive version of the long-haired Dachshund, nonetheless, there's still just as much spirit and character in this little person. They all have very similar temperaments, and this is a lovely little one. Owned, uh, this has come from uh, Northern Ireland. Gary McAlpine handling, I think. There were 116 of these mini long hairs here today. And just look at proportionally the size of those feet. They do have much larger front feet, Daxons. Good for digging when you've got to go down holes. Helps them to get out of the garden, Jess. And now we have the smooth-haired Daxons, first of the smooth varieties. This one a black and tan. And this is the miniature smooth, of course. It's a two-year-old bitch called Nelly. All exactly the same standard applies. Same. The only thing that's different in them is their size from the standard to the mini and the coat, the type of coat. This would be a beautiful, smooth coat. Dense and short it is. Smooth to the touch, always with a lovely gloss on it. Long and low, but we want compact and well-muscled nonetheless. Yeah, they're really active little dogs. Once fully mature, they'll take as much exercise as you can give them. And uh, you're likely to want to go home long before they will. Eighty-five of them today. This is the miniature. On the table now, we see the miniature. This is the miniature wire-haired Dachshund. They've come out of the order that they should have come in. But this mini wire is a little dog called Robin Baby or Baby Robin. Happy. Very happy and happy with his toys. This is a miniature wire haired terrier, uh, Dachshund. And the because whole body on the wire haired Dachshunds is covered in a, a short, straight, harsh jacket with a softer, dense undercoat, very weatherproof, but they've always got these wonderfully expressive little eyebrows, beard, and moustaches, more for profuse. Well, this little chap's come all the way from Mexico to take part today. This I adore the mini wires. I've got one. I absolutely adore them. And this is a smashing little chap. But again, the same as all the others with this lovely... It isn't, a, it isn't a harsh coat. It's a very nice coat to handle and touch. But it is this wire. And they have these wonderful little whiskers, which look so attractive. And because these dogs came in in the wrong order, we just have to watch very carefully what the next one is that we get <laughs> on the table. It's the smooth Dachshund. And the standard size. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that dense, short, smooth coat. This one in a beautiful, glowing red. The smooth Dachshund. The head of this breed. Relatively long, with that lovely arch neck you can see there. Strong jaws, never snipey, beautiful black nose. There's only a 22-month-old dog called Finn. It's got two cc's, this one, and the best of breed. Lovely balance there in outline. Although they're long back, the length is in the ribs. Nice strong loins behind the rib cage to drive the dog along. These dogs are not noted for obedience, by the way. They uh, they do get to... Uh, well, they're scent hounds. Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> scent hounds just do their own thing. They Once they're listen, on scent, no, they don't right. hear you. But they are delightful little characters. They're really lovely. So there's our standard smooth Dachshund. 
85 of these here today. And this is the standard wirehead Dachshund. They did come in in the wrong order, so it's been very complicated for the uh, our lovely chaps who are putting up the captions for us. They're not going to be always correct, so uh, try and we, we may get it right whilst we're watching. But this is a standard wirehead Dachshund, 23-month-old dog called Henry. Temperamentally, all six varieties are really good at giving a good account of themselves. And as such, they're excellent house dogs. And I'll tell you, this, they are wonderful guards. They've got great barks, sounds like a much bigger dog, and a group howl from a few Dachshunds together is something to actually witness and hear. He's looking lovely. And it's lovely to see them so popular now, of course, because although originally Queen Victoria was a great fan of the Dachshunds, their numbers plummeted with both world wars, and it took them quite some time to recover. But mercifully, they have, because they're such wonderful little dogs. Long in the back, really well muscled behind, moving with good drive. Standing beautifully, too. That's lovely movement, and as you said earlier, Jess, look at those feet. They are big. Not so much feet as paddles. Great diggers. Now we have the deer hound. Originally, most probably a Scottish wolfhound as wolf populations declined here, though. The deer hound was encouraged to chase a new quarry and given a slightly racier frame to suit his new purpose. This is a real veteran dog, nine years, three months old. Tarlock is his name. Comes from Germany to take part today. Was world champion in Paris in 2011. This dog's been going quite a while, so it was a very young one. Uh, he won in Paris. Iberian champion as well. He's got over 10 titles from abroad. Very characteristic movement for the breed. Designed on elegant lines, but with a lovely gentle nature that's endeared him as a great companion. A true sight hound, though. And don't forget, this once was able to chase and pull down a full-grown stag. Powerful dog. Well, this is the Finnish Spitz. Very recognisable, lovely red colour. This had two best in shows, a world winner, European winner. Very nice temperament, this particular one. Another dog from Germany. And he won't be penalised for barking at the judge there. That's what Finnish Spitz are supposed to do. They find <laughs> yeah. their quarry, they chase it up a tree, and then they bark like mad until the hunters arrive. It's very characteristic for the breed. Typical Spitz, compact, that wedge-shaped head, plumed curled tail. And interestingly, it's quite unusual. This is a dog that hunts small birds like black grouse and capercaillie. I don't think capercaillie is a small bird. <laughs> it's a huge well, bird. It's not that small. It's not that big, is it? Anyway. Here we have the foxhound. This one is called Chorister. He's a four-year-old dog. He's now got four best of breeds here at Crufts. A very small uh, number he was up against. In fact, only four came to the show. Well, they're much more commonly seen as a show dog in the USA and in Australia. In Britain, foxhounds are still largely a working pack hound. Of course, they don't hunt live animals anymore. They hunt a trail that's been laid specifically for them. Lean hunting machine, the foxhound is. Strong, balanced, really well muscled throughout. It's a very deep chest as well there. Broad and level back, very strong over the loins. Carrying the tail nice and high, but not curled over the back. Great. Lovely movement. It would be... 
probably not far off the original prototype for a sight hound. The greyhound type of dog can be traced way back to ancient Egypt. It was developed here in the Middle Ages when their value was such that only royalty and nobility were allowed to own them. As these dogs have had origins in the Middle East, drawings of greyhound type dogs have been found on walls in ancient Egyptian tombs dating back as far as 4,000 BBC, uh, 4,000 BC. Though dogs of this uh, type spread through Europe over the years, it was in Britain that they were actually developed to a standard. Instantly recognizable, those sleek racing lines, they say head like a snake and neck like a drake. This one's come from Italy to compete today. Yes, it's a four and a half year old bitch called Ginger. Built to chase, top speeds of over 70 kilometers an hour on a spurting run. Would beat me. Now we're not looking at the Foxhound again. This is the Hamilton Stavari. This is an international, multi-international champion and is called, is a dog called Roland, eight years old. It's a Swedish hunting dog. This is a dog that hunts singly, not in a pack. Named after Count Hamilton, the founder of the Swedish Kennel Club. A tri-coloured hound, handsome, hardy and sound. A long rectangular head with a well-defined stop. And they are always tricolour like this, with that black blanket that runs from the back of the head right the way down to the tail over rich town. The Abethan Hound. This is an ancient rabbit hunter from the island of Elvisa and Formentera, known to have been in existence for thousands of years. Lean, agile, and capable of great stamina. They're hard to keep up with. I can remember years ago seeing these in Ibiza, and they were like ghosts. They would appear out of nowhere. They were so quiet and stealthy. They probably arrived in Ibiza by way of early trading ships, such as those of the Phoenicians. A relentless hunter, and like that, they can shut their ears to all human entreaty, so not the easiest of dogs to keep. And this gait, this suspended trot that the handler is desperately trying to settle her into. Getting there, getting there. I think, as you said, as they came into the ring, almost danced the way in and is doing it again. It's a lean, mean <laughs> rabbit killing machine, this one. Uh, <laughs> smooth coat, very easy to keep clean. Even the rough coat sponges down very easily. Now we have the magnificent Irish Wolfhound. This one has come from Italy to take part today. And again, first big win here at this show. Marvellous for them. This dog is 19 months old and called Pendragon. The largest of all breeds, the Irish Wolfhound, actually very nearly became extinct after the demise of his intended quarry was followed by the Great Famine in his native Ireland in the 1840s. Returned to healthy numbers, though, with a little help from the Deerhound, the Great Dane and the Tibetan Mastiff. He's now a true gentle giant. Yes, great size there, strength, symmetry, muscular dog, very graceful. A lot of power, speed, and courage too. Long head, not too broad, moderately pointed, very handsome. Easy, active, ground covering stride. The Irish Wolfhound. An elk is one of the largest species within the deer family, weighing over 300 kilos and with a set of antlers that can take him to over nine feet tall. So an elk hound, a native of Norway, is a solid, powerful, compact, hardy little dog. This is a companion to the homestead. It's a very ancient breed. Skeletons have been found dating back to the Stone Age and they're not unlike this dog of today, which is a three and a half year old one called Aslan. Typical spit, wedge of a head, 
tail curled over the back, sporting a profuse weather-resistant coat in shades of grey with very typical harness markings there over the shoulders. He'll take all the exercise offered by an active family, but be just as content to live a less strenuous life if his owners are less energetic. That's fair enough. Well, this is the otter hound, another breed that has lost its function because no hunting of otters has been allowed for many years. It's a dog built to gallop on land but work in the water, very rugged in appearance. Yes, that weather-resistant, waterproof coat is oily to the touch. Frank putting his hands on the ribs there to feel the coat. And together with large, webbed feet, they make him really well suited to working in the water. This is actually a bitch, nine and a half years old, called Flo. Was the best puppy in the show at South Wales All Breed Championship. <laughs> Movements described in the breed standard as a, a loose shamble when walking, <laughs> but then when they extend into a trot, Whoops. you do want loose, active, long stride there. Just a little slip on the, uh, on the beige carpet, but it's moved very, very nice. It's a lovely stride, actually. Robert Ford, judge of the Exquisitely graceful in outline and always this glorious, rich, red tan colour. The Pharaoh Hound is a keen and intelligent hunter capable of great agility in pursuit of his prey. And this 23-month-old bitch is called Daenerys. It's come from Milan in Italy to take part, has a lot of wins in the continent. Stunning rich tan or red colour recognizable as the dog on the ancient Egyptian tomb main, uh, paintings. Very elegant in outline. This is, this is, the, the actual breed is a native of Malta. Blunt wedge of a head, crowned by that high set of erect and mobile ears. Straight limbed, deep chested, lithe and muscular all through. But that deep red color is the most distinctive feature of the breed, absolutely gorgeous. Free-flowing on the move with that lovely, proud head carriage. This is a three-year-old bitch called Tink, and it's a Portuguese Podengo known as the Warren Hound, a little rabbiter from uh, Portugal. National breed there. And this, the rough-coated variety, small and sturdy, keen, alert, and able to hunt using scent, sight, and again, sound with those big prick ears. The Portuguese word for dengo means rabbit hunter, or warren hound, so that's why we call it a warren hound as well, and that's where the pedengo has gained its reputation. And this one, rough-coated, fawn or yellow, or even black diluted with those white markings, very characteristic. Swift and light on his feet. Slightly longer than tall in outline. Lean and fine wedge of a head. Ears that never stop working. The little Portuguese Pedango. The Rhodesian Ridgeback is unique in possessing a, a marked ridge you can just see there all the way along the back where the hair is growing in the reverse direction along the length of his spine from his shoulders to his haunch. Yes, they're agile, powerful and speedy. This one's six and a half years old. It's a dog called Byron. Well, they were originally bred as powerful game trackers, especially of lions, which he's courageous enough to hold at bay until the hunters arrive. Hard to imagine, but indeed very true. Well, these days the Ridgebacks use rather more as a guard dog. Handsome, strong, muscular, capable of great endurance. Nice flat skull. And that coat is short, dense and sleek, glossy. 
light to red Wheaton, this one slightly lighter, free and active stride on the move. Showed very nicely. That came from the Czech Republic, by the way. This is... Well, one of the most elegant dogs on the move. This is the Saluki, and it's come here from Finland to take part. Saluki of the year in Finland back in 2017. It's a seven and a half year old bitch called Ippi. This is an elegant and light footed gazelle hound who hails from the Middle East and whose lineage can be traced back through hundreds of years thanks to really careful records kept by the Bedouin breeders. It has a highly developed hunting instinct and the speed with which he covers the ground makes him well suited to working in the Middle East. A very ancient breed. And they had to be swift because they were often hunted from horseback with falcons. Great endurance on the hunt. Not the ideal family pet becoming bored very easily but may also be highly strung and sensitive but this is an absolute beauty in behaving and performing so neatly in the ring as i said at the beginning on the move aren't they elegant that's just beautiful movement and this is the slugi north african sight hound developed in algeria tunisia and morocco along similar lines to the saluki but of course without the feathering on the coat this is a four-year-old bitch called Tara. And the reason they look so skinny is that this breed, it's a breed characteristic that they carry virtually no subcutaneous fat at all. It's a cooling adaptation for working in the hardest desert conditions. It's not that the dogs are being starved or anything. It's completely natural for this breed to look like that for you to be able to see the ribs and the pin bones along the back. Yes, it's been a sight hound known in Af North Africa since the Middle Ages. The desert variety is of a moderate height, whilst the mountain variety is a little more compact. The epitome of a racy outline, the slugi. Very strong neck, very elegant in proportion to the, uh, the body, moderately long with a good arch. And so too the Whippet. 416 Whippets were here today. The dainty Whippet. A delicate balance of muscularity with neatness, power and elegance in this one and a half year old bitch called Posh. Developed of course by Victorian miners in the northeast of England, the Whippet was a, a pocket greyhound used to course rabbits for bets. And when that was banned, whippets were raced after rag lures before eventually graduating to hearth and home as much-loved companions and, of course, very successful show dogs. And, of course, in the north of England, they used to be raced very regularly by local people who didn't have greyhounds when they raced whippets. Gentle and affectionate, the whippet is ideal as a companion. Sound, elegant lines always make them a strong contender in this hound group. Well, last year it was best puppy in the breed here at Crofts, and now they've graduated to best of breed, which is splendid. This is a black and tan coon hound that's come from the imported register classes, a breed very new to the UK, which obviously is just going to start to get established. Comes from a family of coon hounds. There are a number of different breeds in the United States, and the black and tan is one of the largest and most well known. This one's called Sherlock. He's a four year old dog, and this one's come from Northern Ireland to take part today. Multiple group wins in Ireland, but this is the first year that they've been shown in competition here at Crofts. And this is a dog, a hunting dog, so we need to see that beautiful, balanced, powerful, muscular animal able to move very soundly, stern held high, those wonderful ears characteristic of the breed. Helping it to scent extremely well. 
those big ears, just what he needs. He gets the nose down to the ground. So that's the last of our breeds, the black and tan coon hound. And so... Now, Frank Kane is going to walk his line, taking a look at all his best of breed winners. He, he's now much more familiar with each individual. He'll have a shortlist in his head. And this is just a little reminder, who's he going to pick? A big group, the hound group now. We've had a number of new breeds come into it. Coming down towards the end of the line, the Slugie, the Whippet, and of course that Black and Tan Coon Hound. First time they've ever been seen in the big ring here at Crufts. Frank, one of our most respected all-round judges, which means he judges most breeds from all the groups. A picture of concentration. He'll have enjoyed that. Once his nerves got out of the way right at the beginning, once he's had a walk along and seen them it's all. It's a huge responsibility judging the group at Crufts. You're sending through one of only seven finalists to compete for best in show. So one thing we can guarantee is Frank won't, well, I'm saying we can guarantee, you'll prove me wrong in a second, we can almost guarantee he won't pick more than eight, he'll pick his eight. <laughs> Going down towards the corner, he's looking towards the Basset Hound. He's he? pulling out both the Petit Basset Griffon uh, Vendien uh, and the Grand Basset Griffon Vendien. And the Chineco de Letna and the miniature smooth haired Dachshund. The and the, the Greyhound. Grey lovely. We've got Irish the Irish Wolfhound and the Pharaoh Hound. And the Rhodesian Ridgeback. <laughs> and the Whippet. <laughs> and he's picked nine, would you believe? <laughs> well, you tempted fate. I did tempt fate. Well, there we go. Thanks for proving me wrong, Frank. Well, that means he had a quality group there. <laughs> Spoiled for choice. Spoiled for choice. That I thought it was a splendid collection there. The Bassett, Griffin, Von Neons, well, both of them at the far end. You'll varieties. be pleased about that, Jess. Yeah, both varieties. Here's the Grand Basset, Griffin, Von Neons, head of the line. The Petit Basset, second in. He's going to move the Grand first. And what we're looking for here is a rustic, no-nonsense hound. They shouldn't be over-prepared. We should be looking at a dog that can go all day long hunting in a pack in rugged French countryside. Slightly longer than he is tall. Good reach and drive in his movement is what we're after. And Frank will be comparing this dog with the breed standard. This one, of course, Frosty has won at the highest possible level. We're going on to the Petit Basset Griffon Vendien now. Magic Mike, top dog all breeds in the UK last year. Another one with massive form. Zara Robertson, such a skilled handler, making sure she moves him at just the right pace to show him to the best advantage. And off he goes, another one. Rustic, working hound is what we're looking for. The petit, smaller all through, shorter legs, shorter back, shorter foreface, little short tail, working its way round the ring. And now we're going to see the Chineco de Letna, this little breed originating on the Isle of Sicily. Wagadoo, this two-year-old bitch. Nice reaching, swinging stride, elegance in the lines. Frank obviously very taken with this one. And 
round she goes. Those ears working all the time. I'm delighted he's picked one of the Dachshunds, but we only have the one there. The miniature smooth-haired Dachshund. This is Nelly, a two-year-old bitch. Long in the back, but balanced with that wonderful deep chest. Little wedge of a head, muscular. And lovely movement there. It's so precise and so busy. They're busy little dogs. And off she goes round the ring. Full of attitude for such a little one. Black they all, and they all have attitude. <laughs> Frank turning now to the Greyhound from Italy. This is Ginger, four and a half years old. That elegant head carried proudly on a long neck, muscular shoulders, deep ribs, characteristic top line, a dog that is built for speed. And come here from Italy to take part today. The great crowd appreciating this dog. Nice round of applause to carry around. Another one from Italy, this one the Irish Wolfhound, Pendragon. Under two years old and getting that kind of quality and maturity in a giant breed that young takes some doing. An enormous breed, aren't they? So tall at the shoulder. And again, skill to get that kind of soundness in movement in a dog so big. It has to be in the peak of condition, reared carefully, listening to his owner all the time going round. The Pharaoh Hound next. Another from Italy, three in a row. This is Daenerys, 23 <laughs> months old. Robert Moore, the fair. Sleek lines, so elegant. Take a round, says Frank. Let's see her extend. <laughs> The skill of the handler, of course, in moving the dog at just the right pace so that they're not, they're showing their movement to the best advantage, not overextended, not moving too slowly. Interesting that he's picked out both the Chineco de Letna and the Pharaoh Hound. But Rhodesian now Ridgeback we're here now. With the Rhodesian Ridgeback, yes. From the Czech and a half Republic. Year old dog. Rhodesian Ridgeback. Pardubici in the Czech Republic. The handler is Teresa Subotova. She says he's the sweetest dog in the world. Showing him beautifully. A dog designed to track over long distances. We're looking for power, svelte outline. And now the last of our finalists is the Whippet. Frank, of course, has already seen this bitch because he adjudicated between dog and bitch judges. Who oh. couldn't decide the who should be the best of breed. Beautiful brindle. Frank always describes the very specific movement of the whippet as daisy cutting action. You can imagine those little front feet sorting the daisies out. And of course, this was the winning breed last year here at Crufts. The best in show 2018 was a Whippet. Is this one, are we looking at the best in show 2019? Only 18 months old and they've come from Belgium to compete today. So we have a largely continental lineup for Frank to go over and he's going to choose. More often than not, we seem to get these dogs from abroad coming through now. So there's the spotlights and the boards. Frank taking a last walk down 
his lineup. So the balls are in Sight place. hounds and so scent the hounds there. Looks as though it's not going to be the whippet. Maybe. Could still go back. He's very fond of those two. <laughs> you need to stop trying to second guess him. <laughs> I know I do. I know. I just come down to look at those passes again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's got quality dogs there. It's a lovely selection. So who's going to be our next group winner for 2019? Well, I've got to say, as a guess, it's going to be between the Whippet and the Grand Basset. Or maybe the Pussy Hunter. Right. What do I know? Making sure he's not going to make any mistake with what he chooses. He's having a great time out there. Come He's on, certainly Brady. keeping us on the edge of our seats. He said his feet were hurting early. He's walking around like that. Slow down. Right? It's, it's going to be Ratty. Ratty. <laughs> <laughs> Top dog all breeds last year. Champion soul trader Magic Mike Sara has done so much winning with this dog. But look, she's overwhelmed to win the group at Crafts. One step closer uh, to Sunday's best in Whippet show. Whippet gets group two. It was a close run thing. It was a close run thing. So posh this oh, one. The half Irish goal. Wolfhound, that magnificent young Irish Wolfhound takes group three. And it's really lovely to get a big breed like that in there. The and the Greyhound uh, from Italy takes group four. So there's our four hand group winners, but look at Sarah, she's in floods of tears. Oh my word, well Magic how exciting Mike is that. Tops the lot, he's done it all year long, he's had the most magnificent career. And now he takes the hound group at Crufts. He's oh, the that is absolutely amazing. Well done, Frank. Tremendous. He's the breed record holder for Petit Basset Griffon Vendia in, the in this country. And, of course, Sarah and Gavitt and Robertson's kennel have dominated the breed here for the last few years. Winning best in show at Crufts, of course, with Mike's mother, Jilly. Indeed. With a very emotional Sarah. You have done so much winning with Magic Mike. Why does this win mean so much to you? God, I can't even speak, which is most unlike me. Um, it's been a, 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 a fantastic 2018 for not just myself, but everybody else around me, friends, family. Um, it's just, I just can't speak. I don't even know how to put everything into words. I'm really sorry. That's okay, but he's following in the footsteps of his mum, who, of course, Jilly was best in show here a few years ago. Gavin took all the limelight with that one. It must be nice for you to actually have a go this time. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> well, many congratulations. Let's see if he can go best in show tomorrow night. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Magic Mike winning the hand group. Such a typical fatigue. Just look at that. Full of joie de vie.